A number of supervisors and postgraduate students run their theses through Turnitin as part of the quality assurance process. This is good practice, though it is worth noting that Turnitin can do a lot more than match your text. In this video, we'll just be looking at some of the more problematic uses of Turnitin that have become fairly pervasive in our universities. Many people think that Turnitin and similar programs are plagiarism detection software. Indeed, some of these software programs even call themselves plagiarism software. Turnitin is a crucial tool to make sure that students don't plagiarize. Using plagiarism software is compulsory for students. Turnitin is very useful for catching students who cut and paste from elsewhere. Plagiarism is a serious problem and it's getting worse now with the internet. Here Turnitin itself indicates that Turnitin does not detect plagiarism per se. Turnitin just finds text that matches other sources in the vast Turnitin databases and shows those matches. It's up to a human being to determine whether those text matches are a problem or not. The distinction between plagiarism software and text matching software is important. Turnitin and other such programs are extremely useful, but they cannot search for plagiarism. There is in truth no such thing as plagiarism software. What they can do, and they do it very well, is search for strings of text that match strings of text from elsewhere. You then have to very carefully check to see whether this matched text is appropriately referenced or not. Here we have a very short piece that's been written um, by student A, and it's all about student writing. I've just got an extract for you here. As you can see, 90% of this text matches other texts. It comes from two other texts, 46%, one 44%, absolutely clear, direct, cut and paste. You can see that student B has got 0% text matching. However, if we look a little more closely, we will see that student B has plagiarized from the exact same two texts that student A did. It comes to 0% because student B has managed to change enough of the words to confuse the software. Of course, if student B inserted the references, he would not only avoid plagiarism, but he would have a stronger piece of academic writing. He clearly doesn't realise this. The cover sheet that came with this master's thesis indicated that 35% of the text in the thesis matched texts from elsewhere. Again, let's remember this tells us very little. But when we look through the report, we can see that there is indeed plagiarism. The student has used direct quotes from texts without properly referencing them. But if we hone in on one small section to look more closely, we can see that he has indicated where the texts come from. His problem is one of unintentional plagiarism. He hasn't been taught the different ways of referencing direct versus paraphrased texts. By definition, the Turnitin report is always longer than the thesis or assignment that was submitted. And it is only by looking through the full report that you can tell whether the similarity index percentage has got any relationship to the level of plagiarism. Let's take a look at this Turnitin report of a document where a full 90% of it has been found by Turnitin to be a text match to elsewhere. Now the first thing we can do is to put in place some filters. If we click exclude quotes and exclude bibliography, the software will attempt to exclude all direct quotes and the full reference list at the end. We apply these changes and the 90% goes down to 89%. I think you can probably guess what has happened here. This person has submitted a previous version of their own document and so Turnitin is now finding a match against the person's own draft work. What we need to do now is to exclude a few sources. Ideally what would happen is the person would actually have submitted earlier drafts as sandbox versions so that they didn't go on to the Turnitin database. But we can simply exclude these, these sources now. What happens to the 89%? 
it comes all the way down to 2%. This student got a Turnitin report that indicated that 85% of her text was matched from elsewhere. When she went onto the filter menu and clicked exclude quotes, however, that percentage came all the way down to 2%. If we look more closely, we will see that simply excluding quotes doesn't deal with the problem. She has not committed plagiarism but she hasn't learned how to write well academically. She has simply cobbled together direct quotes from various readings, rather than understand that her task is to draw on these readings to build her own argument. In many disciplines, there are a number of formulaic phrases that are all part of the process. For example, in law, there are lots of typical terms and phrases that students are expected to use, and these are often picked up by Turnitin as text matching. So students need to go through their report and exclude all of these. Here's an example of the kind of routine phrases that cannot be considered copied, but which the software has picked up as being a string of text matched from elsewhere. Sadly, many academics do not understand what Turnitin is, or how it should be used. Some academics even suggest a minimum percentage on the text matching scale as an acceptable number. Now it doesn't really matter whether this percent is set at 5% or 10% or 25% because telling students that there is a minimum makes no sense at all. Strangely enough what it does do is it encourages students to plagiarize. Students quickly learn how to manipulate the system to get the required percentage. They simply look through their report, make a few changes, resubmit to Turnitin, and continue to do this process until they can fiddle their way under the arbitrary percentage that has been set by their lecturers. It may seem that I'm saying that Turnitin is problematic software, but I'm not saying this. Turnitin is a brilliant piece of software with a hundred very useful applications from Indeed, providing evidence for plagiarism tribunals, through to being a useful tool to help students to develop their writing. So the problem is not with the software. The problem is with how it is misunderstood and very badly used in our universities. And it all begins with a fundamental ideological flaw in the pedagogy. Many academics approach the idea of plagiarism with their students as something that is always an academic sin. They caution their students about it, they make them sign declarations about it, and they terrify them with stories of the consequences of getting caught. Thinking about plagiarism as occurring across a spectrum from intentional to unintentional is useful. We should accept that yes, some students plagiarise because they are lazy or manipulative, and we must ensure that appropriate disciplinary action is taken if we are to safeguard the process of knowledge production and to protect the value of the qualifications we offer. But we also need to accept that many students come to higher education with very little understanding about knowledge production and academic writing, and that they plagiarise as a result of this. Once we accept this, then we begin to understand that what is needed is to help nurture students' writing rather than to scare them out of plagiarising. We do not primarily reference in order to show where we got our ideas from. Sure, this is achieved through referencing, but it is not the main reason we reference. We reference because this is how academic knowledge is made. We build knowledge incrementally. We show our readers how our contribution is joining an existing conversation published by others, and we reference to show this. We use references to support our own claims. Reference to prior literature makes our reader take us and our claims more seriously. This is why we reference, and it is to these kinds of understandings that students need access. Turnitin is a very useful tool to help students in this process, but only if it is used properly. This video is licensed under Creative Commons and you are free to use, adapt and share it.